You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. If you have not already subscribed, please do so. You can find links uh, to subscribe over at our website at quicksurf.com. You can also subscribe uh, at, over on YouTube, Dailymotion, Blip.tv, uh, Vimeo. There's a variety of places online you, you can follow uh, Linux News Log, uh, Stitcher Radio, and tune in among them. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode, starting off at the ultimate, or I'm sorry, not the ultimate, not really, uh, the unofficial Apple weblog. Uh, they have a uh, story here, running Linux on your Mac, the 2013 edition. So uh, the author, Stephen Sandy, uh, wrote uh, an article way back in 2009 entitled How to Set Up Ubuntu Linux on a Mac. It's easy and free. Uh, he basically, in that article, which this article uh, links to, uh, gives a complete um, rundown of how to do it. This one uh, it gives an updated version of how to do it. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out if you're looking to... Uh, run Linux on OS 10 or on your Mac. From a ZDNet, uh, the Linux Professional Institute puts Linux in the classrooms. That's right. Uh, this is a blog post by Stephen J. Von Nichols in the Linux and Open Source blog. He writes, do you want, to jo do you want a job in IT? Then you really need to learn Linux and open source software. Boy, isn't that the truth? Uh, when I was at the open source OSCON convention earlier this year, everyone, and I mean everyone, including Microsoft, was looking to hire people with Linux and open source experience. A recent Dyson Linux Foundation survey found that 93% of employers were looking to hire Linux staffers in the next six months and that 90% were having trouble finding qualified individuals. So definitely, uh, if you're looking for a job in technology, um, you know, Unix and or Linux experience is highly desirable and preferred uh, for many employers. My current job, I'm doing uh, development on an embedded Linux system. So that right there should tell you everything you need to know. Uh, from Linux.com, the Linux kernel 3.11 release boosts performance and efficiency. The uh, 3.11 kernel has been released by Linus Torvalds. The Linux for Work Group's kernel on Monday has uh, many new features and fixes that improve performance and lower power consumption. Changes also keep, also in keeping with recent industry trends towards energy efficient ARM architecture and the use of solid state drives. So pretty interesting. Uh, uh, AMD Radeon DP, uh, DPM support is uh, improved. Low latency network polling, KVM Zen support for 64-bit ARM. Whole pile of stuff. Definitely check it out. Um, you'll soon be running it just through the course of staying up to date. From the register over at the register.co.uk, Linode adds an Linux package to Linux Cloud. Zen hosting company Linode has added a statistics collection and graphing service to its cloud to keep current users happy. Their long view technology, and I'm using quotes here, uh, uses a server-side agent written in Perl available as an open source project on GitHub to inspect server performance, massage data, and output it to a Linode admin GUI. So you get a general view of uh, your CPU consumption, memory network processes, um, and then you can kind of you know pick and choose what you want to look at and drill down from there so pretty pretty interesting definitely give it a, a, a whirl if you are a, a linode user from maxradio.com m-a-n-x radio.com 
There's a new Ubuntu beta out. The Saucy Salamander is available today, version 13.10. Um, actually, wow. Yeah. Well, not today. September 6th. But still, pretty neat nonetheless. Um, check it out. I, I definitely will be. From the Inquirer, Red Hat releases JBoss Developer Studio 7. Red Hat has released version 7 of its JBoss Developer Studio and promised users a sweeping load of updates, ease of use features, and a lot of shine. A blog post from the JBoss Developer Team said that the release continues a pattern of releasing cutting-edge developer tools. It is available for download now. This is uh, JBoss's core piece of technology that Red Hat has developed and maintains. And definitely, uh, if you're a JBoss uh, user, that's something to check out. It's kind of a short show uh, this week. Uh, we're running uh, just right around six minutes or so uh, right now. And I, I honestly, I, I had a lot of trouble coming up with stories this evening. So um, we'll uh, definitely be, uh, I think it might have something to do with the fact that here in the U.S. Uh, just this past weekend, we had Labor Day weekend uh, happen. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, people quite haven't gotten back into the swing of things just yet. So anyway. Uh, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>